everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Vicious RV, here with kind of the reintroduction of the Tandem Axle J Flight SLX series. Last year, SLX didn't vanish, but they became single axles only, and Jayco looked and realized there's a segment, like there's some people who just want to, to take their family basic camping, who don't want fancy glamping, that they weren't really taking care of anymore. So they picked a couple of these uh, models that are coming out, simple, basic, straightforward, but also lighter weight on uh, and, and less cost, which is fantastic. And what's funny is I've been around for a while and uh, what they didn't do here is they didn't just take their existing RV and strip stuff out. They basically reintroduced the J-Flight SLX that they were building years ago. And and for some reason got away from it like it's, it's kind of funny you ever do this in your own personal life where something works so good uh, you stop doing it well that's kind of what they did here and they realized that they had to do something I, this really speaks to me because I'm just a basic no frills kind of family camping man myself it's just three of us me my wife my daughter and we're good with that and this takes care of us a layout like this so well people ask me all the time Josh what do you camp in basically this is the kind of camper that I've used for so many years that's taking care of my family well so what's awesome here though is like they still have that sharp looking decor they're still extra tall inside which I really appreciate in the shower still centralized air uh, plywood you know decking everywhere that you expect out of a Jayco they didn't skimp on the structure they didn't build it cheaper it's just they, they didn't add fluff stuff that, frankly, I don't know that I really need. Now, there's going to be some people like, yeah, but it doesn't have the standard solar like the other J-Flights. It doesn't have the fiberglass option like the other J-Flights or the heated belly. Sure, it doesn't have those things. They still offer that. If you, uh, this doesn't replace, at least not right now, the 264 J-Flight that you probably know and love. This is just a little brother to it. So they're giving you kind of an A and B option. And I'm gonna try to point more of that out as we go here today. And if you like how we share the good with the bad and give you those extra insights, hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. And, and really, you know, this is kind of just like a case of old meets new. The, um, you know, this floor plan has been around for a while. Jayco's had several different iterations of it. And this is just kind of a combination of uh, a, a few things where it's, for the most part, their, their cl more classic version of this layout from a few years ago, which gets the weight and the cost down. But it still has some newer modern touches like that 12-volt compressor fridge, which I, I think is kind of cool overall. Now, they have gone to one single decor, so uh, I hope you like it, because this is all they got. <laughs> but there were some areas uh, where previously some of the woodwork was looking a little dark, and they kind of lighten and brighten it up. But overall gave us some contrast, but notice how they've... That what they haven't done is try to mix colors of wood all together in one spot, which is something I think a lot of people kind of felt they were a little bit guilty of before. There's still a couple USB outlets in the RV, and we, and you know that surprises me whenever my voice starts going up like two octaves. I don't know why I do that, but sometimes my voice jumps right up there. Uh, they're still using pocket-screwed lumber core cabinetry like they didn't scale down to just uh, stapled fasteners or anything like that. And they've really stuck with the same kind of kitchen arrangement that they've had for a while. I love the wastebasket space down there below the sink. However, again, I want to share, you know, good with bad or just points of concern or whatever you want to think about it. One of the more classic features that has been reintroduced here is if you notice, this stovetop does not have a folding cover. So you may want to get some kind of like butcher's block cutting board or something for that if you want that for extra counter space. And this floor plan is definitely hurting for counter space. Um, I would say a countertop extension leaf would be nice. It'd be right up in the face of whoever's sitting here by the sofa. But I also don't know that having a little drink holder right next to me is a terrible thing. Um, when I heard they were making a less expensive version, I wondered if they were going to maintain the centralized air, and they are. So, uh, you know, if you're camping in hot climate country, it helps keep some of that cold air blown back into like the bathroom, into the front bedroom, not just all localized here into the sort of kitchen and uh, living area. Now, this simple series, you're not going to see things like factory TVs, but it is set and ready for one. They're still running HDMI wiring, not, you know, old school RCA wiring, which is nice, which a lot of brands still do. We don't have doors on the ends of the uh, the dining here in the SLX series, however. You will find that back up in the full J-Flight 264. 
Um, there are some of those things where, yes, there's still storage. You can get to it by lifting up the dinette uh, cushions, which isn't everyone's favorite thing, but the fact is it's still there. So if it's still functional, if not maximally convenient, they're probably not adding a whole lot to it. I was a little bummed to see no windows over here um, in the uh, upper bunk, though. But what's funny is windows and lights are two of the more expensive things in RV design. Um, you know, if you factor in all the uh, the material and the labor it takes to get all that ironed out, they actually become very expensive very quickly. So if you want to make an RV cost less, peel out some windows and lights. It doesn't look like they really peeled out a lot of lights though. Now the SLX series has only a mirror mirror on the wall, whereas a full flight, a full J flight, that will actually have the uh, Lipitor storage cabinet. And I like the counter space on either side of that sink right there. Nice little spots for, you know, toothbrush holders, uh, anything of that sort of nature. The um, toilet over here, the bathroom's not massive, but it does the job. It does what it needs to do, um, especially if you're right-handed because you can bump your elbow on that shower curtain and it's really no big deal. Lefties have a hard wall to deal with. It's You might want to think about that a little bit, but generally speaking, it's uh, not too awful terrible. I was also afraid they were going to get rid of a bathroom vent fan, which I've seen some manufacturers do on their cheaper series recently, and they did not do that. And again, the six foot nine ceiling allows someone like me to actually stand in here very easily without their head needing to be in that skylight. And I don't know if you caught uh, what is literally known by Jayco Marketing as the dangler, that blue tag that dangles down that tells you your bunk weights. Those are double beds. So those are each 600 pound rated beds, which is uh, pretty cool. By the way, if you're loading cargo on that though, you uh, that does drop by about a third. Um, so when you're bouncing down the road, uh, they have about a 400 pound rating. When you're in a stationary position like this, it's 600. That's an important thing to remember. The three seater sofa right here, uh, you could kick down to a two seat population controller if you don't want to uh, worry about, you know, getting that little itch there and, and expanding on your, um, well, your, your family and filling up those bunks manually if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Um, and obviously you have that privacy curtain if you do feel like expanding on the family or if you just prefer to have a more private sleeping arrangement. This is a camp queen, most, well, not most, your, a lot of your J flights are Camp Queens. Now your SLX series, I have a suspicion to save a couple bucks is probably going to be Camp Queens, but there's plenty of room here. If you went with a true queen bed, you'd still be able to get around it. You do a little bit of the butt scoot boogie, but it's not terrible. I was actually kind of surprised to still see uh, TV hookups over here uh, around the corner as well. Now the uh, bedroom storage arrangement hasn't really changed too awful much from what you might be uh, a little bit more familiar with. One of the things that surprised me though, if, uh, you know, we crack all this open, if you'd, uh, when, when I heard they were going to do a more budget series of J flights, I said for sure the first thing they're going to do is peel the struts out from under the bed. But they didn't, it's still easy lift, it is still super convenient. One of the things they did that's outstanding here though, is they got the weight in check to the point that they have uh, opened it up to some new tow vehicles potentially, maybe some lighter duty vehicles. Not everybody has the money for a Bigfoot Gravedigger monster truck. You know, some people, they just have the old family half ton they've had laying around for a while. Well, 6,000 pounds GVW, around 4,700 pounds empty weight. That is a very nice series of factors there. Now, I think someone might ask me, what about like if I have a tow package Ford Ranger? I would not recommend doing this. Probably, first of all, I, I haven't even checked the hitch weight versus a Ranger payload. But secondly, the length of this thing, it's under 30 feet, which is phenomenal. But the length of this is gonna push a mid-sized vehicle all over the place. Something a lot of people don't realize, the longer the trailer, the shorter the wheelbase on your vehicle, the more you're going to sway. If you want a vehicle, if you want as little sway as possible in your towing equation, you should get a quad cab long bed pickup. But well, that's expensive and not a lot of people are gonna do that. I like how they're still doing the, the double propane tanks. I've seen some cutthroat bargain stuff uh, trying to be very price point sensitive that has you know peeled out little details like that. And like the magnet holdbacks, they could have gone with the cheaper uh, plastic clips. There'd be nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't be mad at that. Like that nice big baggage door on both sides of that front pass-through compartment. 
you know, they could have saved a couple bucks by going to like a small door or no door, maybe on the off side and hoped that someone wouldn't see it on, you know, on the off chance or whatever. Um, they, they really stayed for the most part where things really matter. There's one thing I think that some people are going to go, yeah, but I don't like that. And I hope you appreciate it. I will point out the good with maybe the not so good. And that is the fact this is the first J flight I've seen in years that is actually running on import tires. So the full J flights, not the SLX that we're looking at, a full J flight still runs on Goodyear Endurance radials. Um, these are running on um, uh, Rainier's, which is an import tire. It has, I think, some kind of six-year warranty. I don't know the speed rating on it yet. I can't keep track of all the different tires from all the different makers. <coughs> Pardon me. Holy crap. I just choked on thin air. Sorry. Almost died. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, tinted windows. They've maintained the tinted windows. And I'm kind of like, I like camp kitchens, but a lot of manufacturers have chinsed and nickel and dimed them to the death to the point that they're not really awesome sometimes anymore. So I kind of appreciate the fact that they just left this wide open for storage. And something that also still surprised me, this still maintains a tankless on-demand water heater, uh, which uh, to my knowledge, they, they run a couple more dollars. I've been a little surprised they did continue with that here, but what if you got a family of you know four, six people? Everyone's taking a hot shower. It's kind of nice to have more hot water available. Um, these are prepped and ready in the SLX series for one of those uh, telescopic removable ladder kind of jobs to get you up to that fully walkable roof. Whereas a full J flight, like you see one over there in the distance, that looks like their 29 quad bunk right there. It still has a full ladder mounted on it. And again, no slides means simple, easy. And here's one of those things that like nobody talks about, nobody thinks about when getting a no slide RV. No slide RVs like this, if you camp in a, uh, a park or a campground that has, you know, sites stacked up right next to one another, no slide RVs give you more space on your campsite. And here's what I mean. If we jump back over to that big quad bunk thing that I looked at, it's got a big super slide. And if you think about it, you have to park the body of the RV three foot deeper into your parking space, closer to your picnic table, to allow that to open so you're not in the neighbor's campsite. If an RV doesn't have a slide out, that means that you get about three more foot of campsite that you and your family get to enjoy. And on some of these parks where they're stacked right next to another, that could be a big difference. Now, I, I know I've mentioned it a few times, but it's very important. So once again, remember, if you're like, yeah, but I like those extra features that the other flight used to have. The, uh, the 264 J flight still exists. This is just a different kind of option, but I'd be kind of curious. If uh, you are familiar with you, which one would you go with and why? Would you save the weight and the cost to go here? Would you spend the extra money and haul the extra weight around to get the, uh, the 264 with some extra widgets and whiz bangs now? Which one would you go with and why? And to maybe help you with that decision, I'm going to leave you a link in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability on one of these because if you're going to start comparing A to B, I think pricing is a very good barometer factor in there. Um, my personal prediction, I think next year, the 264 will cease to exist and this will overtake it because I've seen that play out in the past before. But the 264 J Flight was the number one seller. You don't just cancel your number one seller because you have something else that might be as good come out. So we'll, we'll kind of see how the records go. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.